how does the nervous system send information that is that results in a rich perception? This is a, a, a problem of what's called sensory coding or in general coding. And coding, the, the problem of coding essentially is what is the pattern of action potentials within a population of cells that, pro, that is responsible for producing X? And X could be a movement or it could be a perception. In this case, we're gonna look at how do we get a perception. And, and we don't know the answer we're closer to knowing the answer than we were, say, 100 years ago, for sure. Um, but there are a few guiding principles that are helpful in, in understanding how the nervous system codes for sensory information. And one, of the, one feature is that before it puts it all together, it takes it all apart. And this is uh, illustrated uh, by the Fourier analysis. So essentially, the nervous system is accomplishing a Fourier analysis. What this is, is showing you two different uh, waveforms. Let's say that these are, this is a sound waveform. This is air pressure. And so here you would, he you would hear a series of clicks. Here you would hear white noise. Each of these is made up of a finite number of sine waves. And so, to get this, what the nervous system is going to do is it's going to respond to this and this and this and this and this, not to that. It's going to deconvolve this information into its simple building blocks. Let's see an example of how that works. Here is um, a, a picture that um, from Michigan in the winter, and it's lovely fox tracks across the lake. And what I simply did was I used Photoshop to, to take a low frequency pass of this information and a high frequency pass of this information. And what you, what you see here is that in the low frequency pass, you get a, a general picture of what's going on here, whereas in the high frequency pass, you get the very detailed, you, you see the, fox, um, the fox's footprints. You don't see the fox's footprints so much here. You see the... the the sun extremely well in both situations, but differently. So you're, you're, um, you're dividing up a very complex stimulus into simpler components. And that is, that is the first, one of the first steps that is taken um, in sensory processing. This is not gonna become important later because in fact, there are visual problems, essentially eye problems that will give you uh, this. So this is the type of vision that remains and this vision is, is gone. So that is bad for certain things and fine for certain things. So what if you only could see low pass, low frequency information, reading would be challenging. It, but uh, navigating in the world and seeing movement would would be would be fine, um, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that in this in the specific cases. Another feature of the coding of uh, sensory responses is that it's not uh, you respond to this or you do not respond to this. It is a probabilistic distribution the likelihood that a neuron will respond to X. And so this is a typical tuning curve. In this situation, what they're saying is, is there a threshold response? Let's say, let's say we want to say that there's a, the threshold response is a one millivolt response or two millivolt response. How intense does the stimulus uh, have to be um, accord, uh, across a variety of, a range of stimulus characteristics in order to get that response. And what you can see is that at the optimal stimulus, the intensity is the lowest. So it, it, can, be, it can be a pretty low uh, intensity uh, stimulus and you still get the response. And you can see here that we are able to see spatial frequency in, in uh, vision um, much better at these intermediate 
levels of spatial frequency than we can. We can't see them at really high frequency and we can't see them at really low frequency. So there's sort of a tuning curve right there. Now you can, you can flip this and say, if I give a stimulus, what's the response? So both of those are both going to describe um, what the, uh, are going to describe the response characteristics of, of neurons. The important point here is to, is to remember that everything is probabilistic. So it's, if, there, if you have a, a short wavelength cone, which is typically going to uh, respond to light that leads to a perception, that usually leads to a perception of blue, it's not that it never is activated by longer wavelength light that typically gives you a perception of green. It's that it's rarely activated by that light, okay? So there's, it's not a never situation. It's just a probabilistic distribution. All right, and the final uh, aspect of uh, perceptual uh, coding that w we really need to understand, and this is a, a term that you will for sure encounter in your life, is the receptive field. And the receptive field is simply that every neurons have a limited distribution, a limited amount of, of information that they're exposed to. Um, so this is taking from the somatosensory system. Here are a bunch of, of dorsal ganglion cells, DRG cells, and they end in a spray of, of terminals. And each one of those terminals is sensitive to mechanical deformation in this case. So the blue cell is sensitive to a number of spots, and the red cell is sensitive to a different set of spots, and the white cell is sensitive to yet another uh, uh, set of spots. And so the receptive field of this cell is described by these blue, red, or white dots. Now, these cells are going to project into the central nervous system onto a secondary sensory neuron, which happens to be in the dorsal horn in this case, and it's going to excite this cell. And this cell is now going to be excited by all the blue dots, all the red dots, and all the white dots. And so it's going to have a, a larger receptive field. It's, got, its receptive field is the sum total, the integration of the receptive fields of its inputs, input neurons. And then this dorsal horn cell is going to eventually reach somatosensory cortex, which is getting uh, via the thalamus, which is getting input, uh, converging and converging input. And what we end up with is a, a nice, uh, tight receptive field um, in, the, in the somatosensory cortex. OK, so this same receptive field analysis is present, uh, and we will look at it in vision hearing, and, and definitely in the somatosensory system. Okay, so some receptive field simply means this is the area of stimulus space where we can get a response from this neuron. So now we're going to go on to a, a, a very important um, principle of perception, which is Weber's Law.